Hi everybody and welcome back to Mr. Allred's 5 Minutes On. Today we're going to be talking about Hertzberg's two-factor theory of motivation. Um, this is really applicable for those people studying A-level business studies. Um, so hopefully this will give you some background context into the study and allow you to look at the pros and cons of how that study actually looks in the real world. So Frederick Hertzberg came up with this study in 1966 and he looked at a survey of accountants and engineers, two professions only, and he asked them really what gives, gives you satisfaction and dissatisfaction within the workplace. Uh, and this led him to develop what we call the two factor theory. Um, so he split these into two areas, one he called motivators and one, one he called hygiene factors. And we'll talk about those separately, starting with motivators. So these motivators are things that he said cause satisfaction in the workplace and therefore lead to motivation, lead to people wanting to do more and receive, receive this, this recognition again. And these really are a wide range of things that you will be familiar with, such as sense of achievement, the chance of getting promotion, uh, the chance of improvement, recognition of their effort, uh, responsibility, and generally the nature of the job itself. If we look at those, those are really intrinsic rewards. Those are rewards that we get from for feeling like we've done a good job, feeling like we know what we're doing and feeling like we, we are progressing well and getting the recognition that we want. These aren't monetary rewards, which is different to somebody like Taylor, who would argue that people are only really motivated by, by money. So hygiene factors then well these are things that he said don't in themselves provide motivation these don't encourage you to work harder what they do is stop you being dissatisfied in the workplace so these are things like pay conditions relationships treatment of work and company policy now if we look at that because lots of theories would argue that pay is a motivator it encourages you to work harder well actually is that true because if we look at it on the, on the face of it, yeah, okay, we all go to work to earn money. But when we start thinking about pay as a motivator, if I'm paid a certain level, let's say £40,000, and I feel that I'm working well and I deserve that £40,000, paying me more if I'm working really hard doesn't give me more motivation because I feel like I'm doing well already. Paying me less, however, well, that might start to make me feel dissatisfied, especially if I've got a colleague potentially who's on £45,000 a year. When we start to look at that nuance of pay, well, actually, that starts to make me feel that I'm not valued by the organisation. At that point, then I start to become dissatisfied. At that point, I start to underperform. I start to see a dip in productivity and perhaps therefore lead into demotivation. That's where his theory would differ from somebody like Taylor, who would argue that pay is the prime motivator and you pay people more they'll work harder. In theory and in practice, is that actually true? And Hertzberg argues no, that actually paying somebody a correct level, having the correct sort of conditions for them to work in will lead them um, to feel satisfied in the job eventually with other motivators in place. You might notice that this has lots and lots of similarities to Maslow's hierarchy needs. One, we're actually grouping needs together, which in itself can be problematic, but they did group the needs together. But there's a major difference. You see, Herzberg said those bottom levels, that physiological needs, those security needs, those love and belonging needs, those really are his hygiene factors. Those are the ones that he says actually in themselves don't provide motivation. They just need to be there for that person to feel like they can then be motivated in the long run through those higher order things such as self-esteem and self-actualization that Maslow talked about. The theories are very similar in that respect, but obviously differ in terms of that what provides motivation and what doesn't. Hertzberg often gets linked to the concept of job enrichment, the idea that you know, we have greater responsibility, we allow for greater sense of achievement from our workers, and this therefore provides more motivation for them. There's some significant problems with Hertzberg's theory, not that it's not without merit, because at times it is, but the idea of removing hygiene factors, working on conditions at work, these are really only short-term games, because in the short term that really works, but in the long term, once somebody gets used to that, used to that new condition, well, then what? They want something different. Uh, the same with pay. And this can see, seem, to seem to happen a lot when we look at businesses uh, with workers who demand above an inflation rate of pay increase every year. That's similarly the problem that might, might occur with the Hertzbergian theory. 
Job enrichment in itself can be expensive. We have training needs. We have possibly an increased wastage in the short run as people struggle to adapt to that need. And it really depends on the workers that I've got. If I have low skilled workers, it can be really hard to move to this idea of job enrichment. Replication of his research has been the main issue. Remember at the beginning of the video, I said he looked at accountants and engineers. It's never, even with accountants and engineers, given the same set of results again when this study's tried to be replicated. So is it reliable and is it valid enough to build a motivational strategy on? The argument might be no. Are elements of it right? Yes, but can this be fully applied out through the entire workplace? There's a question to be answered there. Not necessarily a negative, but something to keep in the back of the mind for an evaluation point. This has been Mr. Allred's five minutes on. If you like the video, please like it and please subscribe. Thank you.